Sup. 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 Welcome back to Tab Theory. Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, the geometry of the Chapman stick. Now when I say geometry, I don't mean the fact that it's basically a 2x4 with strings on it. Uh, I mean the geometry of how the tunings and the fret inlays help you see where the notes sit and uh, the patterns that occur and reoccur all over the neck. Alright, so the most basic form of geometry on the stick is, uh, in my opinion, the octave shapes. Uh, the octave shapes are basically the reoccurring shapes that produce one octave, one note, and then the same note, uh, but an octave higher or, or 12 half steps higher. Uh, there's a lot of similarities between both sides, but um, due to the fourths and fifths tunings, there are going to be some differences. So on the treble side, we've got the uh, basic two fret, two string, you know, two frets over, two string up, box octave shape. Right, so I'm starting here on the seventh fret of the uh, fifth string, and then I go two frets over and two frets up. Onto, or two strings up rather, onto the third string, and that is my octave. Then we've got the rectangle shape. Um, and the rectangle shape is you have your root, and then you go three frets back and three strings up. So I take my root on the seventh fret, and I go down six, five, four, and then up onto the second string. There's your octave shape. The next one is. Um, seven frets over and one string up. This one is a little bit more like, uh, you know, if you're playing on the, on the guitar and you play like an open string, then you go over to the seventh fret if you're in standard tuning and there's your octave. You know, lots of rock music has been written that way. So we go on to the seventh fret here, right? And then we go one quadrant plus two frets and one string up, right? And I say that, I, I use the uh, quadrant term and we're going to get into that more in a little bit uh, because quadrants are exactly five frets and I know that every time. Finally, you've got the uh, 12 fret single string octave jump, right? So if I'm here on the seventh fret, then we're going to jump up to the 19th fret or two octaves and two frets. I'm sorry, two quadrants and two frets to get our octave. Alright, on the bass side, um, the box octave, you know, two frets, two strings, is still applicable. Right? And so is the rectangle shape. Except, because of your flipped tuning, um, well, for one, all of the uh, more center strings are going to be your, your root note. There's my low D, there's a higher D. But with the rectangle shape, you actually wind up getting a two octave spread. Then, um, you've got the quadrant octave shape, what would normally be a unison on the treble side, becomes an octave shape on the bass side. So all I'm doing is going from one fret lane to the, to the next, or a single quadrant, like that. Um, and if you did the uh, seventh fret one string over octave on the bass side, that actually gets you a unison now. And then finally, the twelfth uh, fret, you know, two quadrant, two fret um, octave on the same string will be the same on the bass side. So what's so good about octave shapes? Well, with an octave shape, it's you know the most basic uh, piece of your roadmap basically, uh, it's like a landmark on a big map, right? If you imagine that the, uh, the stick is like open country and all of your scales and your chords and stuff like that are uh, different roads that you can take uh, to get from one point to the next, then the octave shapes are like your big interstate signs. So, you can, uh, you can take, you know, one octave like in a scale Let's take our minor pentatonic scale on the 7th fret, and there's my first octave shape. I know I can take that exact same shape and start it over on this octave. Right? Or, let's
let's say I want to move from one position to the next. Now I know that this is my octave shape. And that informs moving back from first position to fifth position. On the bass, the quadrant octave uh, becomes incredibly useful for, you know, uh, classic like funk bass lines or, you know, a simple bass line that just involves the one, the flat seven, and then the octave again. Might recognize that. Having your octave shape will help you with um, chords. You know, I know that, that this is my root and here's the octave in the bass side, so this must be the root and the third. Right? And it helps me with chords down here too, for the same reason that it helps me with scales. I know that that major shape, an octave up, is going to be right there, or... I don't have the strings for it, but it would be right here with the next string right there. Alright, so I mentioned quadrants a lot, right? Let's talk about what that means. For me, the quadrants are basically the space all of, of all the frets in between the inlays. Now, on guitar, you've usually, and bass, you've usually got inlays that go, you know, like they start at the third fret and then they go every other fret up until the ninth fret, and then they skip two and there's the, uh, the octave, right? The twelfth fret. That's great for guitar. For something like the stick, uh, I think that this system of only going five frets or a perfect fourth uh, up from each inlay is brilliant for a couple of reasons. One, um, each quadrant, there is only one occurrence of one note in that octave. So, in my tuning, the seventh fret is B. And for me, quadrants start on the inlay and end the fret before. So here's quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. We start on uh, this B right here. This is a B on the seventh fret right on quadrant two. I can play the rest of quadrant two and I will never find this B in this octave again. So, I immediately know if I'm looking at tabs or sheet music or, or if I need to finger something a certain way uh, and, I, and I need you know, a specific hand position for it, I just say quadrant two. That note's in quadrant two. I know it's going to be this every time. Another nice thing about quadrants is that because they're a perfect fourth, on the treble side, each quadrant up and one string up gives you a unison. Every time. So, I know that if I want to start on this A here, and I want to play this pentatonic shape, and I wind up working my way down to quadrant two, all I have to do is go up one string, and I get the exact same series of notes. And that means that the amount of patterns that you have to memorize uh, reduces drastically, and it's just a matter of applying the right patterns to the right locations on the neck. So I keep talking about how uh, the treble side shapes and the bass side shapes wind up being the same, even though the tuning is different. Uh, and the reason for that is that fourths and fifths are actually the same interval, just looked at from a different perspective. You know, the, the thing that I keep returning to on music uh, as I learn more about it is that everything is actually the same thing, just looked at in a different way. Um, and it, you know, is never more apparent than on the tuning flips of the, of the stick. So, if you do a perfect fourth from B to E, you know, that's one quadrant, like we said, that's five uh, frets, which is five half steps, that's a perfect fourth. If you go from E to B, with E on the bottom, right, that's seven half steps, that's a perfect fifth. Uh, and same notes, just the different ones on the bottom. So it really, it's, it winds up being the same thing, just flipped over. So with the fourths tuning, we've got a much more linear view of things, right? But if you take the exact same shape and apply it to the bass side, it's the same notes, uh, just in a different octave order. And what that means is that everything that you learn on the treble side is applicable to the bass side, and everything that you learn on the bass side is applicable to the treble side. Even uh, if you're doing, 
you know, like the bass side, two notes per, uh, sorry, two strings, three notes per string octave of the pentatonic scale. It is the exact same thing on the treble side. It might sound a bit different, but that's just because the tuning has flipped them. Right? Here's the, the quadrant t trick on the treble side, and we know that on the bass side, because of the tuning, it's an octave. As a personal note, I regularly use this trick in a lot of my music. Um, it's, it's such a cool sound to me uh, to have you know, the notes be exactly the same, except for their octaves are all jumbled up. You know, um, in Splinter by Geff, the, the main, I guess, melody riff that I'm playing, you know, the one that starts the song and ends the song. Well, I take that, and when we transition into the really big riff at the two-thirds mark, the... That thing, it starts out with the exact same shape. Uh, it's a C minor pentatonic, you know, play around. I sneak in, like, one note from the... the complete natural minor scale, but for the rest of it it's just a minor pentatonic, you know, mess around, um, and I just take the exact same shape to get me into that thing. Right? I use this again in the trouble with doorways. You know, that's one of the riffs uh, that I, you know, start out with, like, right in the beginning of the song, and then later it comes back, exact same shape, but on the bass side now. So, the fourths and fifths tuning, is, it just opens up so many cool possibilities, and it, it really allows you to, to, to just get the most, or more, not the most, I don't know if anybody will ever get the most out of a single idea, um, because everybody's got a different way of looking at it, but it, it allows for more creativity with the ideas that you wind up uh, finding on the stick. Now, different tunings uh, will wind up putting you in different places. You know, Tyler uses classic tuning, and my E becomes his F sharp, which pulls all of his treble side shapes two frets back, right? Um, I know other people have like baritone melody, or uh, you know, like deep match reciprocal, or baritone, or whatever. I have match reciprocal, which means that, you know, my bass side and my treble side are all the same notes in the same locations. E, A, D, G, C, E, A, D, G, C. And I like this because it takes that whole, it takes the quadrant thing, and it takes the shape thing, and it takes the tuning thing, and it just simplifies them. All of my shapes, even though they're going to give me different results on both sides, are in the exact same location. I want to play you know, this major chord in uh, first inversion, you know, with a third on the bottom, F major, on uh, the treble side. Well, now I want to play it on the bass side. I mirror myself, right? Here's the um, second string and the seventh string. But if you look at it as the sec second string of the treble side and the second string of the bass side, I have the exact same location and the exact same shape. So, that's uh, some of the geometric aspects of the stick. I am a, a tremendously geometrically oriented player. Um, one of the difficulties that I struggled with on guitar for years is that uh, B string after the G string, it's a, it's a major third rather than a perfect fourth. Everything else is set up in perfect fourths. Uh, and it, it makes sense for guitar as a chordal instrument. All of a sudden you have a ton more chords available to you very quickly, but in terms of scales and lines and, and shapes and tricks like that, it confuses things so much for me. Uh, and so to have the stick be, you know, this geometric, have all of these patterns, it's the same small things pop up all over the same place and, and really allow me to break down things to their simplest components and see where they apply, it just makes so much more sense to me. Um, and I think it's a really great way to start understanding where everything sits and uh, how to apply it all. So, I hope that was helpful. Uh, take it, mess around with it. You know, there's going to be exercises for it uh, that, that kind of help show everything. And keep exploring. <laughs>